everybody, it's Megan from Joyful Mud Puddles. And today I wanted to talk to you about a very important um, topic that's dear to my heart. It's about working from home with children. Now many of you who know and follow my uh, blog would know that I ha have always had my children home. We homeschool. I also do all the office work for our family business. And I've also run several companies on and off over the years. So I am no stranger to working at home and being really busy with having the children around. And right now, because of the global pandemic, many families are being thrust into this position without having any time to plan for it or really the choice at all. So I made a guide. I'll include the links with the video to the blog post so you can follow along. But the first thing I wanted to do is to help you get started. Now what you need to do is determine your priorities. What work do you actually have to get done from home? So forget the nice long-term projects or to-do lists. What is the really down to basics? What do you have to get done for work? You also wanna think about that as far as what basic schoolwork is required of your children. Do they actually have to submit something depending on where you live? What as, as a family, what are your top priorities for them? And can you cut down as much as possible? You also wanna consider meals and what needs to be prepped during the week. It's handy to have a meal plan as also allows you to have to go to the grocery store a lot less. And is there any basic, basic housework that needs to be done in order for you to function? Don't try to get purging done and doing all your office work at the same time. Leave that for the people who have less to do. Once you have your very basic list down, you can start of start laying out a schedule or a rhythm to your day. Now, a special note, a schedule and a rhythm are not the same thing. A schedule is based on time. Now, you might be familiar with that, like a school schedule. Bells ring, you have to be here at a certain time. Now, when you're at home, that's not exactly going to happen. Having a general flow to your day, more like a rhythm, is going to help everyone relax into this and be a lot more calm. So think of it more of as a guide to your day. You know what order things are going to happen and generally the time that they're going to happen, but don't get so hung up on the exact timing. <clears throat> so when you're coming up with your rhythm, what I want to suggest is that you've put in some key anchor points. Figure out when your family eats because nobody likes hangry parents or hangry kids. So food is top priority here. Next, you want to add in any required meetings that you have, any things that you have to be somewhere at a certain time. And once you have those anchor points in, work in all the rest of your essentials. Uh, as far as any routines, nap times, quiet times, and then when you blocks of time when you would like to get your work done. And uh, like I said, on the blog post, I have some sample schedules that have worked for my part family for the last few years. Now, you're probably thinking, great, that sounds good, but when am I actually going to get my work done? So I want to suggest a few ideas that have worked for me. One of them would be get up early before your kids. Now that only works if you don't have some light sleepers that sort of as soon as you wake, they know that you're up. But right now for me with my kids are getting a little older, that works because they all enjoy sleeping in. You could also stay up in the evening after they have gone to bed. We have made really good use of nap times over the years and have instituted quiet time for everybody requiring that they have a break. That is when we use podcasts and audio stories. It might not be a huge chunk of time and you might need to start slowly so that they can get used to this new routine, but it is a great option for you. If there's another adult in the house, you could try taking turns. So making sure that each person knows when they have some chunks of time that they can actually get their work done and the other adult or partner is going to watch the kids. And if you have older siblings that are responsible, you could try enlisting their help playing with younger siblings. But keep in mind, you're going to have to be flexible with that option because they're probably going to need your help if something goes wrong there. Setting up a place to work is also key. 
because a lot of, like I said, if you're just coming home and you don't have a set office, you're gonna be working maybe in a bedroom or in the kitchen or wherever. If you can make a safe place so that your children can come and be close to you or at least come in the room when you're not in meetings, that'll help them stay connected. When my children were really, really little, we had a play yard set up next to us. We also have sacrificed a lot of office supplies <laughs> so that they can play office while we're working next to them and they're going at it with the stamps and markers and highlighters and things, keeps them busy. If you really ha have a meeting or you need some quiet time, a lot of my friends have been putting a big sign on their office door and the family has come to know that when that signs on the door you don't go in and you don't disturb so that's a really important one is to make sure that the whole family's on board and that might require a lot of family meetings and things another key element to working at home is to have your meals prepped like i said food is key when it comes to working with children some suggestions would be to have snack boxes already made up so they aren't calling for you and asking for snacks all day long, making sure that they have access to good healthy food. Another important thing is to plan out your meals for the week so that you know what's coming, what needs to be done ahead of time, and you aren't left wondering what you're going to feed everybody at the end of the day. What's worked for my family is to give each child a day of the week that is special for their own to choose the meal and also learn to cook. So they're learning valuable life skills and they also know that at least once a week they're gonna enjoy the food that's coming for dinner because they chose it. Now, as far as education goes, because your children are home now and if they're of school age, they're also home because of all the school closures. What I want to encourage you is to focus on connection. So any activities that can connect you as a family is really going to help everybody thrive during this time. Things like reading together, doing puzzles, baking, board games, all of that includes so much learning that you don't even notice that it's happening. It's strengthening your bond as well. This is not homeschooling that you are doing. This is crisis schooling, more like it. And you have to keep in mind that your children have big feelings as well about everything that's going on. Most likely they have not seen you as a teacher figure in, figure in their lives. And that takes a lot of getting used to. Most families, when they decide to actually homeschool, take some time for de-schooling. That means taking a break from everything, getting used to this new normal of being at home, and then later integrating some schoolwork into the mix. Now, of course, if you find that, uh, feel that academics is a priority for your family, then by all means, please go ahead and slowly work that into your rhythm. But keep in mind that it only should take about one to two hours maximum, depending on the grade that your child is in, to actually get any formal schooling in. The rest of the time can be used to focus on the children's interests and passions. And again, that is going a long way to helping them learn because you know the goal of education is learning how to learn years from now those tiny little specific questions that you're asking them is not going to take them as far as being able to research find out what they're interested in and having the time to be able to work on that there are many many wonderful resources that are out there right now so many different companies even celebrities have options for families Think of that more of as a buffet that you can pick and choose what works for you and your family and don't feel guilty if you're not choosing something. Just let the rest go for now. Workbooks and worksheets are an easy open and go option. But like I said, anything that looks school-like might be resisted. So try to uh, go light on that unless your kid likes it and then keep working with it. Remember too that your children have big feelings about everything that's going on too. They're less likely to get out of the house than you are because they're not going to the grocery store even. So you really want to focus on attending to big feelings. Modeling how to deal with stress and overwhelm, working through that with your children 
right now will help them succeed in their future. Now that we've talked about all of this, let's go over some actual practical suggestions to keep your children occupied. Audio stories and podcasts are a great way to engage the imagination and keep little hands busy. There are so many podcasts, audio stories, and options out there. For my family, I found with three busy boys that sensory play seems to keep them occupied a lot longer than, with, than certain toys. So I like to have things like kinetic sand, Play-Doh, a water table, even working in the bathtub while they're busy. If you can take your stuff outside, that would be amazing. Now I know right now where I am in Canada, it snowed the other day. We've had a roller coaster of weather. But if you can get outside uh, with your laptop while the kids are playing, that would be ideal. Um, make sure that you spend your time with your kids first thing in the morning, especially the youngest ones, before you go in and get any work done if you can. Fill their buckets so that they're less needy and wanting your attention. And of course, many people are making use of screens and other technology. Try to keep uh, a handle on that if you can. Work out some deals as a family. Um, yeah, that's more of a personal issue as far as how much or how little. And again, if they're doing a lot of school online and then adding to that extra screen time, try to make sure that they're getting some exercise uh, and fresh air or just playing around in the house. Have a break between that. You'll need to loosen up your standards and even on the housework. Let a lot go. Uh, and take any support you can that's available. And right now a lot of that's online. Remember too that I'm here if you need me. As a homeschooling and parenting coach, I work with families guiding them from overwhelmed and frustrated to feeling more confidence and peace. I want to let you know about a special program I have just uh, open right now for registration. It's called Peace for the Weary Mom. I know what it's like to be stressed, frustrated, overwhelmed, and weary. My family went from me on the top of my game trying to do everything and I was failing in every area of my life. Personal struggles came and we just hit a low point in our lives and that's when I decided to reach out and work with a parenting coach. Well, I have to tell you the transformation that I felt in myself and for my entire family was so amazing that that led me into wanting to offer that to other families. And that's when I began the journey to become a parenting coach and to learn more about how to do that and offer that to others. So for a time right now, I have registration open. You can go to my website and check out joyfulmudpuddles.com slash peace for the weary mom. And that is a series of coaching sessions. So that'll be a group Zoom call or audio chat. A series of emails that will be sent out to you afterwards going over any specific struggles that you've been finding with your family as well as any resources and things that I can help to support you. You have a private Facebook group and constant access to me. So I'll be working through your personal struggles, your parenting struggles, your homeschool struggles, how to manage your life and get you back on track to feeling your very best. So check that out. And if you know of someone who might be blessed by that option, please make sure you send them my way.